the knitting cycle can be completed without any auxiliary attachments. Here's how the latch needle works. At rest, or running position, a knit loop rests above or on the latch. As the needle moves up, the old loop, already formed, drops below and clears the latch. As the needle moves down, it receives the new yarn to begin forming a new stitch. The latch is knocked over by the old loop, and this old loop is cast off. The needle moves further down to fully form and complete the new stitch. The amount of yarn used to form a new stitch determines the stitch length. This is important because stitch length affects the weight, width, and aesthetics of the fabric. On modern day knitting machines, needles make millions of loops or stitches a day. Needles may need to be replaced due to wear, but they usually last up to six months, depending on construction, yarn type, fiber type, and speed. Next, let's take a look at what causes the needles to move up and down. In this illustration with a side view, you see how the butt of a needle guides the needle through a path formed by cams. Each cam is designed to allow the needle to run straight or to move up and down. Here's how the needle travels through various stages. At the rest or running position, the needle runs straight over the rest cam. When it hits the clearing cam, it rides up at a steep angle, which forces the needle to rise and clear the old loop. Then the needle drops when it contacts the stitch cam. As it continues on its path, it catches the new yarn. It continues further down, pulling the new yarn far enough for a new loop or stitch to form as the old loop is cast off. The upthrow cam returns the needle to its resting position so it can begin the cycle again. Take a look at this same action while the machine works. Watch how needles run through the camways which cause the needles to rise and fall. And remember that this machine has a cylinder that contains vertical grooves and slots to hold the needles that move. 